Oh, didn't see you there. Well, while you're here, I'm JP, and welcome back to another video. <laughs> Today we're back in the JP Land studio, and I'm here to talk about Halloween Horror Nights, Universal Studios Hollywood, Fast and Furious Roller Coaster updates. So, I hope you're on board, and let's get rolling. Yo, can we extinguish this fire? Now, I'm starting to do more and more videos like this where I want to be connected with you guys. I want to talk less inside of the theme parks, and I'll leave that for the live streams, and more in front of the camera because I feel like you guys never really see my face, and it's really annoying because I have 500,000 subscribers, and when I go into Universal Studios, no one recognizes me. But when I'm in Disneyland, it's all right. Everyone recognizes me in Disneyland. Oh, you're JP Land. Yeah. I like Thank you so much. Have a good day. And while I entered the theme park, I noticed that it was pretty busy for a Wednesday. Everything was about an average of 55 minutes, I would say, maybe even 60 minutes. Mario Kart was posted at 150 minutes, and then it dropped down to 90 as soon as I walked into the theme park. I got to see my favorite actor of Dracula, but he was a little busy, so I didn't want to bother him. But this guy does a really good job as Dracula. I made it into the plaza, and I'm just so curious what's going to happen to this little Fast X promotion. Is it going to be a part of the plaza for the rest of the summer i really hope not because the plaza is just basically a multi-purpose area and they can definitely put in a show especially when the summer crowds start coming into the theme park and the truth is there is really no crowd eater at the moment we're left with only two maybe even three shows inside of the theme park we have street sweep triwizard tournament and Waterworld. And three shows is not enough. We used to have five shows in the theme park. So I'm very curious to see how this summer goes inside of Universal Studios Hollywood. Now looking at this Halloween Horror Nights maze, I've done a lot of research on what this could potentially be. And although I couldn't find any Mexican missionaries or any Mexican houses that look like this, the one key detail I was searching for are these colored windows, but when I went to Mexico, I could have sworn I saw these. But after all my research based on this little facade over here, it's very clear to me that this haunted house will be taking place during the Battle of Puebla. And I think how the story goes is that the haunted house puts you in the perspective of an orphan that lives in a Spanish missionary. And while you're inside of the Spanish missionary, the La Lechuza is haunting you. The La Lechuza is a witch that has taken the form of an owl. And in Mexico, owls have been considered omens of death. So I think this haunted house could possibly be diving into the La Lechuza Mexican legend. And there are so many cool ways of pulling this off. And I can't wait to see what it actually turns out to be. Like I mentioned in the last video, I said that the studio directory will be relocated to the opposite side of that little hub. And uh, they already started taking down the studio directory, so you can no longer see the wait times on this one. And they'll be moving it to the opposite side. The only reason they're moving it to the opposite side is because there are strong rumors that they're going to be building a roller coaster in this location. And based on concept art, it seems like the entrance will be right around this area. So they're obviously going to have to relocate some of the things that are here. And if you've been watching my updates for quite a while, you know that Production Central is very stubborn. It doesn't want to close. It has opened and closed many, many times, but it is now officially closed, Monday being its last day. They already started removing the merchandise from inside of the store and relocating it to other stores. All right, I think I changed into the appropriate clothing. We have the Fast and Furious supercharged t-shirt. And so now that it's time to talk about the Fast and Furious roller coaster, it's now time to fast 10, fast 10 your seatbelts because you're in for a ride. Okay. Now, looking at animal actors, we are presented with a very, very sad sight. All the benches have been destroyed. This place is coming down, and this is probably like the last sight you're going to get onto whatever is left with animal actors now. It's, it's actually very sad to see it come down. It's been a part of Universal for many, many years. It was uh, known as Animal Planet Live, and they've had many different iterations of this show. And it's been a part of Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, at least the theme park, since the beginning. And, and it's just crazy to see history come down. Of course, animal actors will always be in our hearts. And I'm just happy to know that all the animals are safe. They were all adopted by professionals. 
and people in the industry. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that the animals are being taken care of. But uh, yeah, I'm really going to miss animal actors. It seems like they're being very aggressive with this construction process. They're moving very fast. And from the looks of it, it may seem like they might open it by next year. My best guess would be around December of 2024. Coaster track can come up very, very fast, but the hard process of building a roller coaster is building everything else around it. So that could be the queue, the theming elements, and Universal likes to go heavy on theming because it's a theme park, not an amusement park. So they need the theming elements to be basically perfect. So I think we'll start seeing some coaster testing I would say around summer of next year, but I don't think the roller coaster will open until late next year. It took them about a year to build Wonder Woman at Six Flags, and it took them about two years to build Velocicoaster at Universal Orlando. So I think the desired time frame without delays is about a year and a half to complete this roller coaster. And to talk a little bit about the structure on top of special effects, I've been in communication with a lot of you guys, a lot of people on Discord, uh, talking about what this could potentially be and it seems like it might be sound pollution or sound barrier testing so at certain sections of the ride you'll be able to see this little structure obviously it won't be as ugly they'll have it themed and stuff but uh, they'll have this little structure to prevent sound from leaking through because universal theme park is in the middle of a studio and residential areas it's very important to keep that sound contained inside of the theme park to not interrupt with anything outside of the theme park and looking at this haunted house right over here, it's uh, very interesting. I've never seen a facade like this. And like I've mentioned in the last video and in a few videos now, I think this will be the very first scene of the haunted house. So there won't be a facade necessarily, but they will have like an opening scene. They might have two actors giving some dialogue. And I'm getting very like open box vibes about this facade. You know those open theaters where anyone can show up? I think they're called open box theaters or maybe even speakeasy theaters. And I'm kind of getting that vibe out of this. What I find most interesting about this facade is that it extends outwards facing towards the queue. And to my knowledge, I don't think anything has been done like this. They also have a little bit of a staircase being built on this side. They also have a lighting rig that has been put into place and I'm just so confused why that's there already. They haven't themed anything around it and usually they add lighting rigs and speaker rigs later on. So we'll see what happens. Looking at the haunted house towards the back side of Transformers, it is very clear that one of our haunted houses from 2019 is making a comeback. So look at the middle of this haunted house and look at the squares on the left and right of the haunted house. And now look at this image over here, which basically has the same exact design with the circle in the middle and the square on the left and right of the facade. So it's very clear that Holidays in Hell will be making a return this year and I'm not too happy about this. This is the third year in a row that we're receiving a returning haunted house. In 2021 they brought back Pandora's box which I thought it was a great idea until I walked through that version of the maze and it was just, it was terrible. It was nothing like the original version of the haunted house. And then in 2022, they brought back La Llorona and Killer Clowns from Outer Space. La Llorona was good. They brought it back in a better way, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. I think I only went through that maze like four times last season because the energy from 2019 wasn't there. The scenic was basically the same and maybe even worse. And they didn't improve anything with that haunted house. So what's the point in bringing back a haunted house? They probably just had a major budget cut or they were just lazy. And last year, Killer Clowns from Outer Space was the only haunted house to have black unthemed walls. It's 2023. Universal has opened many new experiences and they're making millions and millions of dollars. They have no excuse to leave walls unthemed. And so if holidays and how returns the same way it was in 2019, I'll be very, very disappointed. Since 2021, I have the highest expectation for the returning haunted houses because they have no reason to be bad. If you're bringing back a haunted house, you have to look at the flaws the haunted house had in the past and make it even better. You cannot leave it outdated, especially when we have all of these new haunted houses with fully themed walls and fully themed scenic elements. They will all outshine the returning haunted house. So I have very high expectations for this haunted house and if it doesn't meet my standards, I'm not going to really accept it. Now, at this time, I'd also like to talk about something pretty serious that has affected over 600 team members now and 
It's that NBC Universal and Universal in general is not renewing contracts, which means team members are not getting raises at the moment. I'm very frustrated because me, myself, I've been a team member before and I know how tough the pay is and how tough it is to live in California alone. And uh, minimum wage is not enough for these team members. They are working many, many hours. They are working so hard to make Universal a great and enjoyable place for many tourists and many people visiting the park that um, I'm just very surprised that they choose not to give raises to these team members that obviously deserve raises. They're working very hard. They're making Universal such a great environment and a great place for many. They're making memories. They're making this theme park what it's supposed to be. And this whole theme park would be nothing without our team members. So I just wanted to spread awareness about what's going on. And I hope you guys can let a friend know and spread the word because uh, this is just wrong. This is just wrong. Uh, right now, today is June 1st. I filmed this video on uh, May 31st, but today is June 1st. And uh, right now, outside of Universal, uh, team members are also joining the, the Writers Guild, supporting them as well uh, during their strike. But also, I just need uh, this to be aware with many people because they don't realize how hard these team members work and how much they're getting paid for their work. So in the meantime, I'm going to actually cut to one of the strikes that all the team members did outside of Crypto.com Arena to spread more awareness about what's going on. I just want you guys to keep uh, Universal team members in your prayers and uh, wish them the best of luck. Uh, because Universal right now isn't the greatest place to be working. And I'm really disappointed in in what's going on. And I really hope that Universal can take this message and reconsider their actions. In the city and in the country, that's more than 600 people that Universal has caused to be homeless, living in their cars, on the couch, or possibly on the street. And this is all while Universal since 2020 has had their visitors quadruple. This is more than any other theme park in the entire country. And many of you who follow theme parks know that they have just opened Super Mario Land and where they have had humongous lines with tickets over $100. So if Universal doesn't want to listen to its workers, we will take the negotiations to the And that'll be it for today's updates. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to leave a like. I'm JP. And how they say in the movies, that is a wrap. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Dang it.